Hello and welcome to the Heart Hook Home Video Crochet Podcast. My name is Ashley. I am your host and the author and crochet blogger behind hearthookhome.com. Today we are going to be discussing this fabulous new hound's tooth vest that I am wearing. I did finally pick out the perfect white collared shirt to put underneath it. I've got my black pants on. I know you can't really see it, but <laughs> I did go to the park today and I got a bunch of pictures for the pattern and I will be sharing those as teasers very soon on the Heart Hook Home Facebook page and the Instagram page because they're amazing and I can't pick a favorite. So there's about 20 of them that I really liked. <laughs> I was wearing some bright red lipstick when I went for the pictures. Uh, it's kind of worn off by now, but I haven't worn lipstick in, I don't even know how long, but I felt like the red of that would just pop with the black and the white. I wish I had some red high heels or some red shoes or something because it would have just been like, you know, like chef's kiss right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're going to be talking a little bit about this houndstooth vest. Um, I do have some updates for the October pattern, which is the hooded poncho. I finished crocheting the body of that last night, very late. It was um, probably 11 o'clock last night. I finished crocheting the body of that and got it all ready. I just need to slap on the cuffs on both sides and then put the hood on. And that one is going off to my testers this week. Very excited this weekend, probably very excited about that. Um, so yeah, that is the October pattern. I have not yet started on November or December. Uh, we will see. We will see how that goes, um, where my inspiration takes me. Originally, I had planned to do a men's vest um, in November so that if you guys wanted to do like family photos for your Christmas cards or whatever that, you know, I, th I just, there's something classy about a men's sweater vest, right? There's something classy about it. You know, maybe a solid, like a blue or a solid gray or a black on top of a button up like this. It's just nice and classy and yeah something everybody can get behind, right? Especially if we have all kinds of sizes for the little guys all the way up through the grown ups. So yeah, another thing that I wanted to talk about today is Teresa had emailed me not too long ago asking if she had just missed a podcast or if I had not mentioned it yet. And you know, I have a lot of ideas for podcasts and sometimes I say things and then I forget what I say. <laughs> so I'm glad that you, when, when you remind me of these things like, hey, did you ever talk about that? I appreciate that because I don't really have a whole lot to cover today as far as patterns go. Um, I don't wanna give away all the goods, but I will say that I am super in love with the way that this turned out. Absolutely love it. My testers on this one are about to here, I think. So they're getting ready to separate into the front and the back. And it's, I just, for the, the one thing that I'm really concerned about in this pattern and making sure that everything is tested um, to the fullest is these decreases here and the width of the shoulder for each size. But yeah, overall, I am extremely happy with how this turned out. This is the first draft of this pattern that I have made. And most of the time I have to do several, several um, <laughs> of the pattern before I'm happy with how it turned out like the vest or the, the hooded poncho that's for October. I have made that one four times now. This is the fourth one. So I keep saying, you know, second time's a charm, third time's a charm, nope, fourth time's a charm. <laughs> and the fourth one did turn out. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that um, the hooded poncho came out. I am going to make some slight modifications to the pattern. I'm not gonna frog mine because the thing the things that I'm planning on changing are, are pretty minor um, in the grand scheme of things. So I'm not gonna frog at all. We're talking a couple of rows right and i'm not i'm not gonna frog it for that but yeah so my point is i have only made this one time and i am extremely happy with how it turned out and the fit the length um everything it's just absolutely perfect can you see how great that is oh it's beautiful okay so teresa when she emailed me recently she asked me if i could go over more on yarn weights right so say we're in a store and it's the fancy yarn, you know, stuff that doesn't have a label like we're used to as far as like a size two, three, four, whatever. Um, there will be a gauge listed on the label. So there's a knitting gauge and a crochet gauge that tells you how many stitches you should have in a certain amount of inches, right? Usually four inches for your gauge, which I will link in the description of this video, the gauge uh, video that I have, because I feel like that was a spot on 
excellent um, explanation of how gauge works and how to adjust it and why it matters when you're making crocheted garments. So one of the things that I think is absolutely imperative to have in any crochet or knitters, yarn lovers, anyone, arsenal is a wraps per inch tool. And I did recently talk about this on a Facebook Live, if you watch those when I published, um, I'm not sure what, oh, I think that was when I published the Denzel sweater. But this tool right here, and I went ahead and did it and I clamped it down so you can see, this is a wraps per, per inch tool. This is one from Knit Picks or We Crochet, their sister companies. And I will link to this exact one in the description. I think this one's only like $7.99, maybe $8.99. You can also get them on Amazon pretty cheap as well. So the point is, if you're at, a, if you're pulling yarn off the wall, right, most of what I have on this yarn wall behind me is worsted weight. Most of it is 100% acrylic. Uh, like 98% of it is worsted weight size four yarn. So I know that anywhere I go, unless there's a couple in there that are obviously bulky or they're super fuzzy, you know, like um, the yarn that I used for the koala bear ears when I made my koala bookmark that's available. I have a whole bookmark series, um, which would be excellent stocking stuffers for Christmas if you have a particular animal that someone in your love, in your life, loved one um, likes. Uh, yeah, whip them up a bookmark. But anyway, unless it is something obviously not worsted for the most part anything that I see up on my wall is going to be worsted if I had a question about that though I could use this tool right here so what you do with a wraps per inch tool is you take the yarn in question right and you wrap it around in between this one inch bar right in this divot here that is one inch wide and how many times you can wrap it around you don't want to squeeze them on there you don't want to put so many strands on there that you you know you have to force them in and you don't want huge gaping gaps but I wrapped this around perfectly on this one and I know I just know that this is a sport weight yarn. So for this yarn I should be able to wrap this around the wraps per inch tool 12 times. So the bigger the yarn, the less times you're going to be able to wrap it around. So for a lace weight or a fingering weight, you're gonna be able to put in a lot more wraps around than the sport weight has 12. Let's see, the worsted has nine. The bulky weight has seven. So like a size five bulky weight yarn, you're gonna be able to wrap that half as many times as you would for a sport weight yarn-ish. Right, but this is an excellent tool, especially if you're in a fancy yarn shop and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know. And you know, you don't actually need, I mean, these are handy and I love to have this. I have this hanging up on the side of my little work area over here on my desk. You don't absolutely have to use this. If you wanted to use a ruler and put rubber bands or hair ties on both sides of one inch, so that you can't go any farther than that. You can use a ruler as well. It's perfectly fine. That's essentially what this is. Um, but yeah, keep it handy. I also, I always, always, always keep a ruler, a full-fledged ruler. I think I've showed you in the past, either here or on the Facebook page, I'm not sure. But I have a really awesome ruler. It's a wooden ruler um, and it's the rulers of England and it has all of the kings and queens of England throughout history and the dates that they ruled, which is handy, you know, because you never know when you need to know that information, right? <laughs> but I do keep, that ruler in my crochet bag. If I'm taking my crochet somewhere, then I will take that ruler with me so that halfway through or, you know, make sure that I'm still on track. I do have a retractable keychain as well. And I do have a pattern for that. I'll share um, the link to that in the description of the video. A retractable uh, pattern for a, a cover of that so that you can turn it into a keychain. And I have that hanging on the side of my crochet bag as well. It's always important for me I, I'm very surprised by how many times I have gone either into a store, let's just say I'm shopping somewhere and I see a sweater or a poncho and I'm like, holy moly, I can make that. Like I could do better. So I wanna know how wide it is just so that I know, okay, this is a general rule of thumb, right? Boop, 
there's my tape measure. Or there was once I went to Sears and they were having a super clearance on these recliners and I thought, mm, I don't know if that's gonna fit. So I measured the back of it with the one that was on hanging off the side of my purse, you know? You can measure that and then go home, see if it's gonna be right or, you know, call someone that's at home and see if it would actually fit. So there's a lot of reasons why uh, you should carry a tape measure around with you. <laughs> Random, right? You wouldn't think, some people might not think they'd, uh, you would need all of these different tools for crochet, but it's definitely handy. Especially if you're going to be looking at gauge, say you're working on a wearable and you need to make sure that something is going to be, you know, the exact same gauge that you need definitely um, helpful to have. So anyway, you don't have to have one of these tools, but it is very helpful. Just make sure that you're not packing it on super tight to where you're just cramming them in there and make sure that they're not so spaced out that you can see a lot of the space in between, right? So here you can see just a little bit, and this is 12 wraps, and then that's literally all you do is count how many wraps you have going around and that is the size of the yarn that you have here, right? That you have in your hand. So this would be very helpful for me were I picking um, yarn off of the wall and I was going to make an amigurumi or or something, something like that and make sure that all of my yarn weights match. Yeah, so let's talk about this houndstooth vest for a little bit. This vest I have in, I've, designed this one from extra small up to 5XL, so it is a wide ranging pattern. I don't think I'm going to do child sizes of this. That's something that I get asked quite a bit um, for child sizes or everybody wants child sizes or they want a pockets or they want a hood, which is great, which is why I'm putting the hood on the hooded poncho um, for next month and I really wanna show you that. Uh, but yeah, let's see. This pattern works Remember when I showed you and I held it up and I've had all the yarn ends coming off of each side? It was actually not too bad to weave in the ends as I was uh, describing last time. So I had, what the beauty of it is this goes, where's my seam? Is that my seam? Or is that my seam? Oh, here's my seam, right? It's not very noticeable as I'm standing there. Like obviously it's, even hard for me to find, but here's the seam going up the side. The beauty of that as the hound's tooth stitch worked in the round where you join and turn and crochet all the way around, join, turn, we are changing yarn colors every single row. So the beauty of joining and turning at the end of each in a round object here is that there are no none of those yarn ends to weave in the entire length up. I did, however, clip my yarn every time I started a new row on the back and on the front. And I did that because I didn't want there to be a big change of thickness from here, right? If if we were carrying our yarn across each one of these, that whole fabric would have been a lot thicker. And I like, I don't know how well you can see it, but I like the way that it feels, like it's not super stiff. You see how it's just kind of, kind of flowy a little bit. Um, and it wouldn't be, that way if I had carried the yarn around each row as I'm crocheting it. One way that you could get around that is if you were to go up, up a hook size, then it would allow for a little bit more room of the carrying yarn um, that goes in between your stitches as you're crocheting them. That's a way to combat that or just clip your yarn when you get up to the chest area here and weave it in. I did weave in the black yarn ends into the edging here and I wove in the white yarn ends going into the actual vest like we talked about so that it wouldn't have all of the bulk of the black and the white right in this one inch or two inches um, right next to on both sides of the inside of the V here and of the arms on the sides. You know, I've seen some um, hound's tooth vests that don't have the edging here or on the sides. And I, I just, I feel like that's really kind of what sets it off, you know? And I love the way that this just sits right in there, just nice and gorgeous. Of course, when I was um, at the park today, I'm taking pictures and I'm standing there, I've got my tripod just like this. And I'm standing there, I've got my little remote shutter and I'm standing there and I'm taking my pictures and I'm doing my thing. And this entire cross country team, the high school cross country team just comes running by and I'm like, oh, okay. So basically, you know, I, I couldn't take any pictures for a little bit because they were in the background, but but yeah, we all just kind of did a little <laughs> smile and wave type of thing. But yeah, it was, um, yeah, 
the teacher said, oh, I love it. It looks so cute. And of course I had my bright red lipstick on. I'll share a picture here in the inlay, but yeah, so super excited about this one. Like I said, extra small, or maybe it's extra, extra small. I'm not positive. I'll look, but it's extra small all the way up through 5XL. So we are all going to be rocking our sweaters and it's going to be absolutely fabulous. Of course, if you wanted to do colors other than black and white, you can do any two contrasting colors you want. One of my testers is doing a teal and a peachy color. And the other one is doing black and white, just like this. This yarn that I used for this one is a wool. It's a Swish uh, DK. It is a wool, um, mostly wool, and it is a super wash. So that is something to think of as well when you're looking at wool. Yarn is if it's super, super wash or not. So super wash means that you can wash it and dry it and it is not going to shrink incredibly, you know, down to a child size sweater. And it's also not going to felt. So depending on what kind of yarn you're using and the fiber content of that yarn, if it's acrylic, it's not going to shrink, you know, it's going to be perfectly fine. If it's cotton, it will shrink a little bit because the first time you wash anything cotton, it's going to shrink down just a little bit. If it's wool, depending on the fiber, if it's a natural wool fiber, chances are anytime it gets into contact with moisture and friction in the washing machine um, and heat, it's going to shrink down and then you put it in the dryer and you know, you might as well. I don't know if you've ever had that happen where with a store-bought sweater where you put it in or your spouse washes it or whatever and you're just like, oh my God, thank you. Thank you for doing the laundry, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, so that's something to look for. If you're going to use a wool yarn like I have, make sure that it is a super wash, which means that it will not shrink and it will not felt. You still wanna probably wash it as a delicate, um, but yeah, you can throw it in the tumble dryer and um, all that good stuff. Actually, what's funny is I, after the last podcast, I finished the vest, I finished weaving in all of my ends, I did all of the edging, I did everything, got all of that. I mean, that edging required like at least two glasses of wine or three. Like it, it was, it was a lot. It was an entire evening's worth of weaving in these ends and it was worth it you know, and I mean, the wine was nice, but um, I threw it in the washer and I was like, oh my God, you know, like I totally didn't even think about it and the washer was done and I went and looked at the yarn label and thank you, thank you Lord that it was super wash. So I knew that it wasn't going to shrink or felt in the washer, so. Yeah, pretty awesome, right? Anyway, uh, my te my testers are finishing up with this absolutely gorgeous vest pattern, and they will be done hopefully um, within the week and or within a week from today. And I will get that pattern published as soon as possible. I know that I told you I would have teasers in the last podcast, but I promise you that I will be sharing teasers on the Facebook page, and I'll put a couple in the inlay here just because I I am absolutely in love with how this turned out. Bonus does not have sleeves. So it takes um, not as long to crochet as in a full blown sweater, right? One of my testers did mention, I posted a, a lot of the pictures in my tester group that I have. Um, it's a private group on Facebook where we can share um, feedback and ask questions and share pictures and things like that um, during the testing process. And she had mentioned that maybe having black sleeves on this would be really cute. And I was like, mm, maybe it would. I also, okay, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but a while back, I got on Amazon and I found a hoodie, like a basic plain Jane hoodie. I wanted it to be no frills. And I was particularly looking for a certain style of sleeves where the sleeves are up and down. They're not the Raglan style that are angled up on, you know, where the shoulder is created um, in to the top of the sleeve. So yeah, I, I specifically purchased a hoodie that has those sleeves attached in that way because I have a crochet idea. Um, I haven't started it yet. I've been it's been on my to-do list for too long, let's be honest, but <laughs> that is something that I'm looking at getting done here soon. But let's just say hoodie, sleeves, crochet, it's gonna be awesome, I, I hope. <laughs> So I will keep you posted. Um, stay tuned for this Tones to the Best and I will share that with you as soon as I can, um, as soon as my testers are finished up. Yeah, so you guys have a lovely weekend and I will talk to you in two weeks for the next episode of the Heart Hook Home Video Crochet Podcast. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.